Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at what we call dynamic equilibrium systems and something called the equilibrium constant represented here by Kc. But first of all, let's review energy profile diagrams. So let's say that we have some reaction here, A plus B forming C plus D. And we're gonna draw an energy profile diagram to see what's going on here. So let's draw our axes. And on the x-axis, we're gonna have our reaction progress. And on the y-axis, we can have our energy. Okay, and let's say that our reactants, our A and B have some energy, let's say here. Okay, and our C and D can have some energy, let's say down here. So we've got A and B and C and D. And then we connect those as so on an energy profile diagram. And the important thing to take from this that we're really looking for is that this distance here is the activation energy for this reaction. This is the energy in which we need to overcome in order to form C and D from our reactants A and B. But what if we wanted to go from C and D over to A and B? So let's draw another energy profile diagram here. And let's have our reaction progress on the X axis. And we will have our energy on the Y axis. And this time we're starting with C and D and we're going up to A and B. Okay, so what is the activation energy in this case? The activation energy for this reaction is this distance here. So that's a much larger activation energy in which we need to overcome in order to get this reaction to occur. So what we can see is that the activation energy on the left here is lower than the activation energy on the right. Therefore, this reaction is more favorable. However, the important thing to note is that just because that reaction's more favorable, it doesn't mean that this reaction on the right here won't occur. If we put the right amount of energy into our system, we can get the reaction on the right to occur. So let's take a look now, let's go down here and take a look at what we call reversible reactions. So we've just seen one. So A plus B can go to C plus D. But at the same time, if we put enough energy in, C plus D can also turn into A plus B. And we represent this with a reversible arrow. And the reversible arrow, a lot of the time, looks like this to form C plus D. This is now what we call a reversible reaction. And reversible reactions can be in what we call dynamic equilibrium. That is that the rate of what we call the forward reaction, which by convention is the reactants as listed, turning into the products as listed on the page. So the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of what we call the reversible reaction. So let's pick, uh, we'll pick a light blue, the rate of the reversible reaction going that way. So the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. And well, if the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction are the same, and hence we're in dynamic equilibrium, well then the concentrations of our reactants and the concentrations of our products will also remain unchanged because we're making C and D, we're making C and D here at the same rate in which we're using it up to go that way. So the concentration of our reactants and the concentration of our products also remain unchanged with time. Okay, so we're using things up at the same rate in which we're producing them. And if that's the case, then many other macroscopic properties will also remain unchanged. So for example, temperature will remain unchanged, pressure will remain unchanged, color, and any more macroscopic properties associated with that system. But something that's important to keep in mind is that equilibrium systems don't have to share the same concentration with the reactants and the products. So what do I mean by this? Well, this is best illustrated with an example. So let's say that we have A plus B is in a reverse reaction with C plus D. And let's take our reaction vessel here, okay? And we've got, let's say, four A's 
and four Bs in here. And we've also got a C and a D. And what happens is over time, we see that say this C and this D here will react to form an A and a B. Whilst this A and this B here will react to form a C and a D. Because if it's at dynamic equilibrium, okay, the forward reaction rate is going to proceed at the same rate as the reverse reaction. Okay, so A's and B's are going to produce C's and D's at the same rate in which C's and D's produce A's and B's, as per what's going on here. And then these A's and B's here all remain just as A's and B's. So have we experienced any change in concentration? And hopefully we haven't, because remember for dynamic equilibriums, the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the rate of the reverse reaction, and therefore the concentrations remain unchanged. So does that happen? Well, the concentration of A here is four, and the concentration of B here is four. Concentration of C is one, and the concentration of D is one. And what about over this side? Well, the concentration of A here is also four. Concentration of B here is also four. Concentration of C here is one, and the concentration of D here is one. So the concentration of our reactant and product hasn't changed. However, what we can see is that the concentration of reactants, A and B, is bigger than the concentration of the products C and D. There's four A and B molecules to each C and D molecule. And what we see by that is that therefore we can say, therefore the, uh, the reactants, so A and B, the reactants A and B are what we call favored. Okay, so in this equilibrium, the reactants are favored and therefore, we say that equilibrium lies to the left. And a good way to illustrate this even further is to look at something called the equilibrium constant, called Kc. So let's say that we have a reaction taking place. Small a, a and b's is, oh, let's rub that out, is in a reverse reaction with C and D. Okay, well Kc is the measure of the concentration of the products with respect to the concentration of the reactants. And that will tell us where the equilibrium lies, as we just saw before. So Kc is equal to the concentration of our product, so in this case, concentration of C, to the power of its coefficient. So if this C was a two and this C uh, capital C was hydrogen, we would have two hydrogens and it would be concentration of hydrogen squared. But we're going to use letters to keep it as a nice mathematical formula for us to use. Uh, times by, sorry, times by the concentration of D to the power of little d, divided by the concentration of capital A to the power of small a, times the concentration of capital B to the power of small b, our reactants there. So for example, let's say that we have uh, hydrogen gas and iodine gas forming HI gas. Okay, and what's really important to note about this equation is only gaseous and aqueous species are allowed. If we have a liquid or we have a solid in our chemical reversible reaction, we cannot put them into Kc. Those concentrations remain unchanged, so we don't worry about those. But can we give a Kc value for what's going on over here? Well, Kc is equal to the concentration of Hi, our product, to the power of one, divided by the concentration of hydrogen gas, times to the power of one times the concentration of iodine gas to the power of one. Because we can imagine these imaginary ones out the front here. And anything to the power of one just stays as it is. So our final answer is this here. And well, what does this actually tell us? Well, this tells us that if K is bigger than one, then our numerator is bigger than our denominator. And therefore, 
we have concentration of products being greater than the concentration of the reactant. So if K is bigger than one, then the products are favored, i.e. the equilibrium lies to the right. And if K is less than one, then the reactants here on the bottom are bigger than the reactant uh, than the products on the top. So the concentration of the reactants now is larger than the concentration of the reactant of, of the products. So therefore the reactants are favored. Therefore equilibrium lies to the left in this case. Now, an important property about K is that only temperature can change K. This is very important. And you might be thinking, well, what about if I change the concentration of this product here, or I change the concentration of hydrogen gas? Well, the important thing to note is that Kc is only a value for when the system is at equilibrium. So if you add in some hydrogen gas here, the system will not be at equilibrium anymore. It will have to find a new equilibrium. We can give a value for something called Q though. So let's have a look at Q. Q is the same thing except Q can occur at any time. We can give a value for Q no matter what the current progress of the reaction is, whether it's at equilibrium or not. So in this case, Q we can give it any time. So for this reaction, it will look like this. And if Q is equal to K, then the reaction is at equilibrium. If Q is not equal to K, then the reaction is not at equilibrium. Now, the best way that I can illustrate this is with an example. So let's come down here and let's say that we have uh, our reactant vessel and this is gonna be for a reaction of A in a reverse reaction with B. Okay, and we have uh, A's and B's in our system here and this is at equilibrium. So Kc is equal to, and we can give a value for K because it's at equilibrium, it, the concentration of products divided by the concentration of reactants, which is one over two in this case. We have one B and we have two A's. But what about if I add four A's into, uh, oh, I'm gonna add three A's, sorry, not four A's. I'm gonna add three A's into this system. Well, I now have A, 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 and A, and a B. Okay, and something called the Le Chatelier's principle, which we'll explore in the next video. So I encourage you to come back to this once you've understood Le Chatelier's principle, says that we're going to favor the forward reaction. So we're gonna favor the forward reaction and we're gonna convert our A's into B's. So let's say that we do that, we end up with, let's say we convert one A into a B. So this A here converted into a B. So this one now is a B and all of our other A's stay as is. So Le Chatelier's principle will partially counteract that change. Okay, and now we're back to equilibrium. We've established a new equilibrium. And Kc, even though we've changed the concentration of A or B, okay, Kc is equal to the concentration of B over the concentration of A, which is equal to a half. But you might be thinking, well, what about here? You've intentionally left this out. But that is because we can't give a value for K at this point. We can, however, give a value for Q. Q is equal to the concentration of B over the concentration of A, which is equal to a fifth. And you might be going, well, huh, it's changed. But remember, Q and K are not the same. If Q is not equal to K, then we're not at equilibrium. So here we would expect that the concentration of A has risen and it's going to impact this equation directly, which it does, the common misconception is that it impacts this equation directly, and it doesn't. It can't impact this equation directly because at the moment that we add these A's in, we're no longer at equilibrium.